Good afternoon. Uh, today is going to be an interesting topic. <laughs> I think it will be anyway. Um, basically, I'm going to say the answer or the answer. The, the title is "Stay in Your Lane." It's one of the biggest keys to relationship, relationship romance, and dating. And you probably know some of this, but I want to hopefully spin some things that will help you get even better at all of that. So, before I jump into the topic, let me choose myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks. So, my name is Barry Selby. I am an inspirational, inspirational speaker, spiritual teacher relationship attraction expert, a relationship love expert, um, author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. A very good book if I do say so myself, because I did write it. Um, and I'm also help women create balance in love, life and business. I do this because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which informs my work. And also I inspired these talks over two years ago, almost three years ago now, um, called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring a Feminine Heart. Today we're going to talk about staying in your lane, and I'll explain what that means in uh, short order, and how that also when you know what that means and how you know to, how to live that, then you'll be more effective in relationship, romance, and dating. Fair enough. And by the way, um, I seem to be facing a head cold coming on or coming through, so if I'm sniffling a lot, that's what's happening. Um, really annoying because it's like 95 degrees today, and it's just so frigging not a good time to be cold, having a cold, you know? Anyway, that's so this, so that's something else. Um, this is, by the way, a daily Facebook Live I've done for the last, I said, almost three years. So I'll tell you about the replays where you can find it and how you interact after I get done with the broadcast, of the, or just the back end of the broadcast, before I sign off. So let's jump in. If I can get my head clear enough for this. It's interesting. I didn't think I would be this cluttered up inside, but apparently it is. So let me preface this by saying that what I'm speaking about here comes from um, one of my favorite teachers, and I just happened to watch an interview with her about an hour ago, which was on my mind, Alison Armstrong. And she was being interviewed by another person I know, um, and it was just, it, what she said some things that were so potent that it's like, oh yeah, I remember now, that reminds me about staying in her lane. And she said it that way because the thing is, or I should say I'm saying it that way, because in dating and in relationships, and this is where it's gonna come clear, men and women, don't stay in their lanes. Now, I mean this from the point of view of the masculine and feminine dance, not necessarily about how men and women behave, because this is going to have a little nuance to it, as well as being pretty direct as well. The framing I'm using for men and women is really overlaid by the terms masculine and feminine, because that's where the juice of this really lies. And this is the stuff that Alison teaches so, so effectively, fluently. And if you want to find out more, just go to understandmen.com. Um, and read all about it. She's got a new event coming up in January, which I might be able to go to, I'm not sure yet, called Lux, which is an open event to everybody. Um, no prerequisites. And it's new stuff and, and old stuff and good stuff. She's doing a weekend event, I think in LA. Anyway, that's a little promotion for Alison. Let me get back to the topic at hand. So staying in your lane means to align to our values, meaning that we are often out of alignment with who we are. Particularly for women this has been a more challenge than men, is that, how am best to say this? I've said this before in other ways, I'm just gonna say it again this way because it comes out this way. Ladies, you've been working too hard. You've been working on building businesses, being successful, running things out, making things happen, getting things done, in your masculine energetic, which is what's required to do that. Now I have said also that basically a lot of women have been acting like men in the business world because the business world was designed for men by men where women have been trying to fit in and conform ever since. But I'm speaking more about energetically here because yes, the business world does encourage women and men to be like men. Yeah, unfair, I know, to get things done. But then the problem comes up when it gets to dating is that for women especially, how to turn it off. And the other part of this is because men, generally speaking, are lazy. Yes, I'm gonna out all of us this way as we men are lazy, when a woman steps into the, ma the man's shoes to like do the things that men would normally do, he's like, fine, go for it. That's one of the ways it happens. It was certainly the way I did it myself, so I'm guilty as charged of doing that because I didn't stay in my lane. In fact, I abandoned my lane, so to speak. But then, of course, I was in situations with women who were taking over my lane. That's what I mean by this lane thing, is that we tend to cross over into each other's lanes of polarity and of... Um, I was going to say roles, but maybe not so true. But for example, when it comes to dating, when a woman asks a man out and he doesn't take charge of the relationship, he's abandoned his lane. When a woman asks a man out 
and doesn't give him the space to take over, but she keeps running the show, making it happen, getting things done, she's abandoned her lane and taken over his lane. This is one of the things I experience a lot in relationships, and maybe it's personal. <laughs> but that is something that comes out in dating and in relationships. Now, what I'm also going to say clearly here in this preamble about the dating arena is that it's perfectly fine for a woman to let, her mo let a man know he's inter she's interested in him so that he knows also that asking her out is actually healthy. Because we men have also been beaten up, battered, and bruised by being rejected by women who didn't want to go out with us. I'm not saying good or bad, I'm just saying what happened. And for a lot of men, we've been rejected on the front end of not being, um, basically being rejected, simply put. Now on the other end of things, a lot of women have gone through pain and suffering because they've been rejected afterwards. So I'm not saying, I'm gonna say all fairs in love and war. No, not so, not so. but we both, we both have room to learn how to treat each other with respect. And to again, occupy our lanes, to, res to stay in our place of autonomy because the power of when we stay in our lanes, which is the polarity um, ownership, then we create better chemistry. We create better connection, we create more passion, we create more attraction, we create better sex. All that stuff is available when you stay in your lane. So if that is interesting to you, take notes, because this is coming handy for you. Now the way something happened that Alison said, which I love, was the way she framed it, and I'm going to hopefully articulate it fairly clearly. She's talking about how both men and women create t testosterone. Men obviously more naturally do it innately, but women have to do it as well when they're doing stuff in the business world. So when you're, when you're out doing things, because the doing activities of getting things done, making things happen, goal achievement, getting it, getting results, is very masculine energy. So men are naturally using masculine, uh, using testosterone to do that. Testosterone, you send them all right around. But the thing is, as I said before, kind of as a joke, that we are lazy, it was a joke by the way, is because we also, when we're efforting, efforting, efforting to get things done, you also take time out to rest. And the way Alison put it today, which I love the way she framed it, mainly because it makes my life easier, is that when we are not doing anything as men, like when you, ladies, when you have a, a man in your life and you go up to him, like, what are you doing? He says, nothing. He's not actually telling the truth. Now, I'm not saying he's not, that he's lying, but what he's doing is innately is restoring his own level of testosterone. 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 <laughs> I, keep, I keep messing that word up. It's one of, my, one of my favorite words to mess up, so I keep doing it. And understanding that that difference is part of the restoration process, the way Alison put it was so beautifully put, is that when we're quiet as men, when we're resting as men, when we're being um, still as men, it's the time we're actually in restoration process, almost like a um, hibernation in a way to restore our testosterone. Ladies, that is not the time to want to vent to him. The way she put it, and which I love the way she described it, and again, I'm, I'm paraphrasing because I might mess some of this stuff up, is like, women often think when a man's sitting still, it's a good time to go up to him to vent, to release, to speak, so that he can, so that he can hold for you, to listen to you. That's the worst time. Because when you do that, it's like the man is building testosterone to go do something. If you keep telling him to do nothing and stay and be still and just listen to you, He's feeling frustrated. So uh, the way she put it was, it's like he, he's being handcuffed and, and straightjacketed and tied to the couch so he can't move so that you can vent to him. And meanwhile, he's going to be fidgeting and stuff like that because what she said, and I really got this clearly, is she said is that when the man, when he's fidgeting, it's not he's fidgeting because he's not listening to you. It's because all the energy is building up in him to go do something and he's got nowhere to put it. So, and the, I'm giving you what she said to do, ladies, just so you have this one, is first of all, because ladies you tend to not have a framework or a containment structure type thing that's a masculine thing if you want a man to listen to you to vent to express to um hold the space for you first of all give him a time frame i know it goes against your type and it doesn't work for you i know but this is this is what she said i'm just like what she said you know like, say that you know i i need to get off my chest he's been bugging me i want to talk about it can i borrow you for seven minutes for example now if he says yes i can great and if he says no not at the moment i can do it in three hours also great because you've got to respect what he's saying so that's one thing so the other part she said which i thought was really good as well so first of all the fact he knows there's a timeline means it's finite means that he knows he can go okay i can hold for seven minutes but seven minutes in one second i can go do what i need to do that works the second part which she said which i thought was great too is that he he's he what she said for him to do and this is actually from a teaching about the, the, the trash can um, 
let me let me sidebar to explain this piece is one of, from one of her trainings. It's from um, unless any men or in sync the opposite sex. I think it's in, from in sync. In sync the opposite sex. She talks about how for for men one of the things we can do for ladies when she is upset and distressed and wants to release and get stuff out. We are we are holding we hold an imaginary not not with our hands but in a, internally we're holding an imaginary trash can, which is a place that she can vent into. She can it's almost like she's throwing up and barfing up all that toxic energy she's been carrying around for so long. Thing is, ladies, that's the job the man does. Now, men, the job you do is the job you don't do is try to fix it, resolve it, or cut it off. Your job is to hold hold that imaginary trash can. So. When the, getting back to the man sitting on the couch, like straight jacket in, in that feeling, when she's talking to him, when she's, I should say, when she's venting in front of him, he can focus on the task of holding the bucket. And she, the way she said it was like, hold the bucket, hold the bucket, hold the bucket. And what she's saying is that for us men, we've got to be on task all the time to stay in a masculine. So when we're listening and we're not doing something internally to move the energy to hold space, it doesn't then we shift out of a masculine and we lose that testosterone buildup we've been working on as we're sitting still. Now, I'm, again, I'm, I'm messing up what she said, but it was beautifully framed and phrased. If you want to check out Alison's work again, I recommend it. Go check it out. Check it out understandmen.com. Great site, great information, great content. But this is a piece of what she taught and it really reminded me about staying in our lanes because when we do that, again, men owning the masculine, and, and by the way, these are generalizations because some men, are some men are naturally feminine, some women are naturally masculine, straight or, straight or gay doesn't make a difference. There's, it, it, that, there's, there's an, a segment of society that does that. But generally, men align to their masculine energy, women align to their feminine energy, and that's the way we generally function. Again, generalities. So that's the lane we stay in. So understanding that polarity, again, creates great chemistry in a relationship, great attraction in a relationship, great understanding of each other's differences, and also not attempting to change each other to be like the other one. One of the habits we get into is assuming that our partner will be like us rather than respecting, honoring, and encouraging the differences. When you attempt to get somebody like that, you're trying to put somebody in your lane, again, you're out of alignment. So staying in your lane means both lanes, both lanes are required in relationship. It's the healthiest way to have what you want in love, in relationship, in romance, in dating, because one, it gets that polarity in place, as I mentioned, and the chemistry that comes from it. But secondly, it makes it easier to relax. Because ladies, when you're in your feminine, you may forget this, but when you're in your feminine, it really is a place you can relax into because it's natural, it's organic, it's the flow, it's the movement, it's the dance, it's the nuance, it's all these different things. For men, when we're in a masculine, we get to relax because we're in a place of holding space, we're not having to do stuff and perform all the time. Task orientation is a masculine trait, but it's a job to get from A to B, and in between doesn't matter. For the feminine, the journey is all about the journey. Between the A and B is where everything happens, the goal, whatever. That's the difference between masculine and feminine energy. And that's a good thing to understand the differences so we can respect each other's difference and not try to overlay each other with our own agenda, our own beliefs, our own rules. When we respect, or when we talk about the difference between each other, then that's when you have a healthy relationship. Now, this is, just, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just a little sliver of stuff that is out there to be learned, stuff I teach and also re recommend in my work, because this is what changed my life 12, yeah, 12 years ago. So I hope this has been of assistance to you. This is one of many things I've talked about this in my journey and in my work in relationship study and also in teaching because it's important, because we're not learning this stuff. So I'm sharing this on behalf, or I should say, showing what I heard from Alison Armstrong, because it was such a potent teaching point, and there's more to it than that. So this is just something to give you some thought for the weekend, especially if you're going on dates tonight, like this weekend, stay in your lane. And again, it's not up to the men to keep asking, 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 ladies, be kind, and let the guy know you're interested in him so he can actually take the next step to lead from that point forward. This, by the way, that piece I talk about is, is the metaphorical handkerchief. Um, we have lost touch with that over the years because of the dating apps and dating sites and smartphones and everything else and with women becoming um, autonomous and independent in the world so they take charge. Back in the day, a lady would flirt with a man by dropping a handkerchief. It's a metaphorical one nowadays is that ladies, when you learn man know you're interested, however that is for you. And also because again, we're wired differently 
to make sure he got that so he knows that's true, then you can relax and let him lead. That for me is maybe the most potent shift you can make in your dating experience for ladies and for men. Because we men have made more than enough mistakes substituting the wrong woman or, or be interested in a woman who's not interested in us or not even being attendant to the woman that's in front of us. So again, staying in your lane, owning your space and then honoring each other's differences and ladies, be invitational when you find one you like. Now, be clear with your boundaries too. There's a whole other conversation I've done a few weeks, a month or two ago about boundaries, but I'm not talking about it here. But this is just a piece of the puzzle. It's not the whole answer, just a piece of the puzzle. So apply this with caution. <laughs> I'll let you play with that. Um, I'll put some links in the comments as always. Um, my book I already mentioned at the beginning, so as usual, I'll put the book in the comments. I'll also put a, comment, I'll put a link in the comments to have a chat with me, for ladies especially. If you're stuck in having some challenges, softening, learning how to be in your feminine and attracting the right relationship, or in learning how to basically heal your past baggage, um, I'll put a link in the comments for a chat with me so we can talk. It's a conversation we can actually explore and see where you are and if I can help you, and if you want to get help, we can go deeper. That's, um, that's two things. Anything else? Okay, yeah, I'll put that in there too. I'm <laughs> just testing to see what fits. I have a course called Attract the Man You Want, which is for the ladies. It's called Attract First because the main thing that women have forgotten how to do. Like I said, when you put the invitation out there, let the man come in, that's the way to do it, versus chasing, chasing, chasing. That's, again, wrong lane. Masculine practice does the pursuit. That's the hunting energy. I've got a course called Attract the Man You Want because it creates the space for you to actually manifest and attract what you want in a relationship so the man can show up and then do what he's meant to do in his lane. So my course is set up to do that. So I'll put a link in the comments and check it out. It's an eight module online course you can do easily, effortlessly. Maybe by the end of the year, you'll have a whole new relationship. Yeah, eight weeks does fit. I'm <laughs> just checking how long before the end of the year. So I'll put the link in the comments for, comments for that as well. So track the man you want, a chat with me and my book be in the comments for you to check out after I sign off. This is my daily Facebook Live, as I mentioned. Do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, every day of the week, seven days. You join me live tomorrow, same time, same place. Um, that'll be a weekend broadcast. Hopefully it'll be a bit cooler by then. Supposed to call off this weekend. Um, and you can find me on my personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week. Um, you can also watch the replays on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. And most of them are there, but not all of them. So please like my page. But you'll find every single one of them, because I made sure of this, on my YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby. You can subscribe to my channel. And there's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. In fact, it's youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. Um, subscribe to my channel, find the playlist, peruse down there, find what you want. Those are easy to sort through, by the way, because the titles are listed more easily to read than they are on, on Facebook. Facebook's not good at videos that way, unfortunately, but this will help you. And that hopefully will give you something to look at. You can binge watch all weekend if you want. It would take more than that, but you know, check them out. If you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below or send me a message over social media and I'll respond when I sign off. If you're out dating this weekend, stay in your lane. I'll speak to you again soon. Take care of yourself. Bye.